Hi, I'm Russell from Making It Australia, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a masquerade mask. So I'm going to start with cutting um, out my scales for my dragon by using the Fiskars leaf hole punch and nice green glitter paper. As you can see with the um, hole punch, you can create like little scales for dragons, but it can be used for feathers. Like I said, it, it's up to the imagination. So with the scales, I like to layer them to give it dimension. So you will take more glitter paper, gold, and use the petal hole punch. which gives you a variety of different sized shape petals, which makes it look extra fancy. <laughs> Out of the Mylar paper, cause it's like an acetate, it's a little bit harder to get it with the hole punch, so you just have to push it an extra little bit harder. And if you do find that your hole punch is getting blunt, all you have to do is put some tin foil in there and hole punch it and it will sharpen the blade again. I'm just gonna take my glue gun um, to layer these up. So I'll take the green glittery one and just put a little dollar at the bottom. Take the clear Mylar one, the shiny gloss, pop that on top and I'm just gonna make it extra by adding the gold. Because you're going to be layering this, you can do different patterns and it looks really nice on the mask. So it, it, it's a way of elevating your mask. Take your template that comes with the project. You just cut out the mask so that you can transfer that to the stiffen felt to get your base, to get the eye holes. I just fold it and give it a little snip so that I can stab the scissors through and just cut it around the eye. Now, once you've finished cutting your template, um, you just put away the rubbish and you're gonna take the stiffened felt. I usually cut two templates and stick them together. You can take any old marker and just outline where you've cut. And because you've printed the template out, you don't really have to be precious. And most of this is going to be covered up. Now in your template, you also have a horn. And with this horn, you can flip it so that you get both horns. You just trace it onto the stiffened felt as well. Now with the horns, you only have to trace them once because you don't have to double them up because they're just going to be stuck onto the mask. So you just flip that one so that you get the matching horn on the other side. I just use scissors to cut them out. Once you've cut out all your templates, you're ready to stick it all together. You can use different ways to put it together, but I just use spray adhesive because it's quicker. You stick the two mask templates together. So you, you just have that extra strength. And then once you've stuck those two together, you can stick your material. I'm going to be using this green shimmery material as my base. I particularly liked the shiny ones because they also come with a little stretch. So when you put the mask on, it will kind of grip to your face. So you kind of want a little bit of give. You don't want it to be too stiff. Lay out your fabric. Give it a little spray. Your mask. Stick it straight down to the fabric. Trim off any excess. And because you've used spray adhesive, 
you can adjust it. So you just lay it down and you can see that it's nice and smooth on there. And then what you do is you just trim an outline around the mask. You can probably do about two centimetres, a centimetre and a half. You can eyeball it. You can cut some little darts into it as well, just so that it can fold over. Now with folding over these ones, I will actually use hot glue. Once you've put that glue on, you just fold that over and kind of push it towards the back. You, you, you'll feel the hot glue on there and you just, you're just pushing it over. So I'm just going to continue gluing down the tabs along the mask. As you can see, I also did the horns, which you do exactly the same thing as you do with the mask. And now we're going to put on the fringe. With the fringe, I think it looks like a cool kind of hair texture for the mask. So what I do is you just unravel it and it comes in a really long string. And this one's a beautiful emerald green. And what I do is you take a glue gun and I just put the glue down there, all the way down to the edge. Apply the fringing. So it's got a trim bit where you just put it down. And I like to make mine extra lush. So I go back and forward. And what I do is just put the glue on top of the fringe. So when you're doing the last bit, just kind of measure it out roughly. Just cut it off a little bit extra. What you can do is you just fold that under so that it keeps it nice and schmick. You will get little threads of glue everywhere from the hot glue. <laughs> Try not to get it on the fringing because it is very hard to get out. Now I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side. As you can see there, you've got your two hairy sideburns. You just take the Simply Gimp trimming. I'm just going to outline the edge so it has a border. You don't necessarily have to use this trim. I find it just looks like a traditional Venetian mask because you'll find that they use a lot of gold and I think it just gives it that kind of traditional feel. Now those two are done. We can glue them onto the mask. Big dollop of glue. And just stick it down there. Hold it. So now I'm going to add the thicker gimp trimming to the outside of the mask around the top, the bottom, and the eyes. So with the mask, you do try to make it as symmetric as you can. I'm quite particular. So when it comes to the eyes, I'm very finicky. So that it gives it a nice professional look. So now I'm going to place the scales that I made previously. You can place them anywhere on the mask, on the head, on the sideburns, on the face, you could cover it. You could even um, use the scales because I cut gold ones as well. So you can even glue them onto the horns to give extra texture. If you look at like any kind of reptile or pictures of dragons, oh, it's a lot of layering. If you just layer and layer and layer, it gives you that kind of realism of, of scales. And that can be used for like feathers or, or even scales for a fish. If you want to change it up or if you've got extra little bits, 
you can just pop them in wherever you want to break it up. Like if you find that one spot is too green or it's got too much glitter and it just doesn't give the effect that you want, you can mix it up. And when you're using the hot glue, you just need a little dollop. You don't need too much because then you'll find your project will be very heavy. So you can use any color felt. You could even back it with the fabric that you use. I like to use felt because it's nice and soft and I prefer to use skin color felt because um, I find with colored felt, it's a little bit distracting on the other side of the mask because that's where your eyes are. Before you put your backing on, um, you just take your large ribbon, can be any color, and I've got this fluoro green color. You just glue it on the sides of the mask on the back. You place the ribbon down. You just repeat it on the other side. Just outline the mask with hot glue and you can place your backing on there. And there you have it, your finished masquerade mask. You can get all the things you need to make it at Spotlight. And I hope you enjoyed this project.